back. I was always taught, especially about communications, that uh, there's two parts of listening. That's the output and the input. What happens up here, I really can't give it anything unless I hear some background on the output. When I started uh, as, a, as a police officer, we started the Rhode Island Rhode Island Police Association, which joined the National Black Police Association. And in that, we, we were told from the national office that the only way to make things change with the law enforcement was to get involved in the community.
Does anyone have any questions generally? Uh, okay. How does uh, how does a representative generally in the general assembly connect with their constituents? Because uh, in student community government, I feel there's a problem where people sort of get into these positions, but then they sort of forget who they represent. Uh, it's more of an individual. I'm just here, and then they forget that you know everyone everyone on their card has a representative. For example, I represent residents and commuters and so on and so forth. I mean, so how, how, how have you seen you and other General Assembly members sort of connect their constituency officially? Well, I can't speak for the other 74 in the House of Representatives, but I tell you how Joe Almeida does. <laughs> if, in fact, this is my neighborhood, when I learn in community policing, other than touching somebody, <laughs> is what you do is you take your neighborhood and you divide it up into pieces. And so, for instance, if, if I could, like this half of this side to lead up to this one lady here, we're washing the park all of you all on South Side. So I would look around, try to find who are the speakers in South Side, who are the speakers in Washington Park. Uh, about two weeks ago, three, I think, I just had a meeting with some people in, in uh, South Side. So when I go and I knock on the door, the first thing I do to tell people is, Joe, I mean, it's not going to do nothing for you. So to tell me. That's a compliment. Yeah. Nothing. The only way to get something done is it's us and we. In order for me to get it done, I need to be at least five of the neighbors in this particular place, let's say it was Ashmont's here. So what happens is now I, I got, they can gain a lot of weight if you go to all these people's houses. It's all almighty when you start meeting everybody and everybody wants to feed you. Okay, <laughs> so when you get to the house, I went to this lady's house, and it was blacks, Latinos, and, and Southeast Asians, and we all met at this one lady's house. And all I did was pull out my pants and you know, what was happening on, on Ashmont's here. Same with Washington Park. The concerns of Washington Park may not be the same in the South Side. And I just met at another lady's house who was Portuguese, and it was really interesting talking to her because of all the issues of Collins Avenue and the waterfront. So, where South Side had a different issue, we totally different here. So, what I'm telling you is when community police like running into politics, I try to find a neighbor, try to get him to get five people. I began to get him fired, you fired, you fired, you fired. Before you know, my phone was ringing, and people were set up meetings for me to come to their house. And I said, what was it? So it's the power of numbers. It's uh, yeah, actually talking and uh, communicating with your constituency, which is very important. And I want to stress that, especially to new freshman representatives uh, that are here. Um, you know, there's, a, there's a large freshman class, and I definitely advocate you guys talk to your freshmen and bring back issues that they may have. Other question that I have is, uh, is again, just in an activity sometimes with representatives, do you ever see that in the General Assembly, certain representatives are just elected and they just maybe attend meetings, but they're not actual legislators. They don't actually try to uh, maybe actually walk, uh, construct laws that's going to actually help out the community. And in, and in your case, uh, is there an example of uh, a legislation that you sort of fought for in the past? And and a co-sponsor that was maybe would have been brought up if it wasn't for you being elected in position. Again, you know, I always go back to back in the day when I was a Marine Corps, we was always taught never talk about us and we. Because when you do, I never gets taken care of. Well, I mean, never talk about I always talk about us and we. So ours, in my particular thing, I had to fight myself on this one because uh, I was a guy that wrote a racial profile in the state of Iowa. I felt that I don't, still don't believe it had to be a study. When in fact black people simply know it does happen. Uh, a racial profiling is not done by uh, white officers, it's done by black officers. The National Black Police Association, they said it back in the 80s, that, you know, we, we do it among, we do it to ourselves. So racial profiling came across the highway. Now, you know what it's like to be an ex cop, the type cop that I was, and then you got this, all these guys coming to the Judiciary Committee for guys who just, you know, you were cops with. And they're fighting, you know, you know, no, you know what's wrong. So that's the point about being a legislator. You know what the truth is. Speak it, say it, do it. The other thing is we brought up the issue of our promise plantations and failed. But in fact, as we go through life in itself, we find that words change. Well, the word plantations is derogatory. Because in my particular black angel, we tried to change the name of the state. It didn't make it, but oh, I had my phone ring. I'm 
to a racial profile or something else. Like I know some all over the country. Never mind racial profile.
I have, I have a, let's see. I have a few more, not many. So, but uh, yeah, we appreciate your support for Rhode Island College, but uh, your support with your uh, constituents in your district in terms of vote out among them for college because this is going to help uh, your your uh, constituents in your district because of their education jobs. And, well, I think you'll have a good amount of questions for this. So I'll be honest with you. I didn't read the trial tape for everybody. But I'm, but I'm okay with this. I think it's a good thing because of the fact that I know a lot of uh, what I call political prejudice. A lot of kids from South Side are coming. So naturally, I'm going to protect all my kids and put them in the school. Are you all going to just look at me now? <laughs> Education. 
location of an enemy as he or she comes back out in the free world. But there's some issues where they're not helping those guys at all in the prison. And in the training school, you must have a strong heart because when I was a cop, I didn't want nothing to do with juveniles. Because after a while, and some of the things I saw, uh, you know, made my heart bleed. And yes, I am a liberal, by the way, a big time liberal. But the fact is, you know, I understand reality.
I have a meeting with Gail at the Omni Agency next week to start construction of the mobile app that we have for SEG. Um, and as far as elections go, because we had inconclusive results for the sophomore and junior classes, we're going to have runoff elections for that on October 31st. Um, because there were only fillings for the president and treasurer of the um, sophomore class, we have a declaration period again for secretary, vice president, and class representative for parliament um, between the 22nd and 26th. So if you guys know sophomores, help them fill that because if they don't fill it this time, it's inactive. Um, so uh, that is all of my announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Costa, Secretary John Locke. Okay, so the holiday party is pretty much solidified. Expect new occasions at the next meeting. Um, other than that, we have three constitutions on the agenda tonight. Um, and yeah, so that's okay. Um, and I'm looking for parliament members to fill up SOC. We're awesome. I'm looking to bag those two right there. <laughs> those two. It's event planning. It's awesome. We, and we do um, operational management stuff to just like, you know, editing constitutions and whatnot. But event planning, it's awesome. It's great. I really want you on my committee. So I mean, you can totally do something fun if you want, but you could also participate in something even more fun, known as the Finance Commission. Oh, no, um, we had some really productive finance meeting today. I think the, those people that... This representative Dean was there, and he joined us today. Yes, I, have, I already have a freshman. Um, and so I have representative Porter. I have representative Dean, I have representative Porter, and I have representative Santuri. Those are my only three parliament members, but there are still two positions up for grabs. Um, I also have one non-parliament, so if anybody knows anyone who's interested, I'd be willing to take suggestions or applications. Um, monthly budget reports were sent out on Tuesday before 10 a.m., so they're in all the organization email, of uh, email, mailboxes, uh, which is down in the Welcome Info Center, and if you don't have one, please go speak to student activities and they will get you one. Well, maybe you are. Um, the president and treasurer meetings have been going really well. Every funded organization has met with me at this time with one extended deadline. So we only have one organization that if they fail to comply is at risk of losing their funding as of right now. So for the big process that we go through through September and the beginning of October, we've kind of done a pretty good job of keeping most of our organizations around. Um, Rob Sanctuary is doing a really great job as my comptroller. And we're scheduling sessions with Rob to better financial scales with organizations. And Rob will specifically be working with Gianna for her roundtable meeting on October 31st oh, yeah. during free period um, in, in this room in Student Union 307. I'm doing a plug for it because she forgot to advertise. Um, and it's on event planning and event budgeting. So Rob and Gianna, but Katie would be doing it as the student organization coordinator. She's on the conference. So we're going to have Gianna and Rob and Katie kind of pair up and work together and Put all their knowledge into one awesome presentation about event planning and event budgeting. And we'll have cookies. And there will be, <laughs> there will be refreshments. Um, so that's all I can conclude for all I have for my announcements. Um, I'm looking forward to you guys hearing the report on Group Boston. So that's it. Thank you, Treasurer I have the following announcements. I have a bunch of leaves. Uh, dear should Mr. Speaker. Should we them with unanimous consent, Mr. Speaker? For time's sake? Yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, dear Mr. Speaker, I am requesting an early leave for tonight's meeting, the 17th for 8.30 p.m. If our meeting goes later than that, because I have a very important midterm tomorrow from Terry Lord, Representative Burke, aka our substitute for Deputy Speaker. Can I have that unanimous consent? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so I'm at the end. Oh, at the end, all right. Mm -hmm. We'll go that way, President. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, members of Parliament, I unfortunately must miss the meeting of Parliament for Wednesday, October 17th. 2012 due to acquiring free tickets to say anything with banners. On Wednesday night, normally I wouldn't have purchased tickets during a parliament meeting, but I can't sell, say no to free. I am looking forward to seeing some of you on Sunday for the free free GR te GRE test at Providence College. If you need directions or want to meet up beforehand, please just ask for my phone number from our awesome speaker. Best to all. Thank you. 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 Th
very younger son. And he gave me his number. Marcy, you yeah. to come in. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, and there's no discussion on that. Dear, Mr. Uh, dear Speaker Escobar, I'm sorry that I cannot be at tonight's meeting. I'm going to New York to the WX and NCMJ conference, and my bus is leaving early than, ex than expected. Thanks for my best for it. Uh, dear Mr. Speaker, I will unfortunately be able to attend this evening parliament meeting due to being in New York, the CMJ conference. I hope that tonight's meeting is productive. I'm looking forward to the one next week. Sincerely, the Secretary Jr. Dear Mr. Speaker, I'm the parliament. I'm requesting to leave for the October 17th meeting because I'll be attending the college uh, music journal conference in New York City. I hope parliament has a productive meeting. Best wishes, Tom Lino. Dear Mr. Speaker, I'm the parliament. I will not be able to attend the parliament meeting on Wednesday, October 17th, because I will be in New York for the college music journal conference and so forth. For Brick Radio, 90.7 XM, Kevin Martin. And uh, dear Mr. Speaker, I'm glad that Nathan Bristol wrote just one sentence. I'm currently in New York City for CMJ and cannot make it to SCG tonight. Regardless, I mean, uh, regards. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any discussion on those leaves? Uh, or we're going to accept the unanimous consent and accept the unanimous consent. Um, also, on other announcements, I just want to, because I'm not able to talk about the uh, group Boston discussion when uh, it comes along. I just want to say that I want to congratulate President Becky, that was her big initiative, um, the rest of the executive, executive council, and everyone that sort of advertised for Group Boston. It was the biggest event, basically, in Rick that I, I've been a part of. Well, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't there, but this is the biggest rank that, this biggest event I've that we've had in quite some time, possibly ever, um, especially with the uh, creation of the uh, rec center. And that was a huge accomplishment. It brought students together. Uh, 800 students attended that meeting. Yeah, and uh, yes, you, you, can leave, you can leave the rest of the discussion. But having 800 students at an event around college, just to have fun, that was something that wasn't seen as possible uh, nearly four or five years ago. Uh, and now that's possible, and student community government is at the helm of making that possible. So that was very important. And regardless of what might be printed or misinformation uh, from our school newspaper, it was very successful and people had a lot of fun. And I think that is a good use of student money, uh, especially when there's a, uh, there's a lot of advocacy at Brown College. Uh, a lot of people were asking when Ruth Boston was going to come back, when Brown College was going to have similar events to this. Uh, there's actually a great picture of Gary Penfield and. <laughs> and, and, and I also just want to say, I, I wasn't at the event, unfortunately I wasn't at the event because um, I had taken my niece to a concert at URI, she was a big fan of the artist performing it, and I didn't hear that there were a lot of um, a, uh, any disturbances at the group Boston event. And may I just say, at URI, the students over there, they create a lot of disturbances. <laughs> so I think, I think that should be recorded by administration to our students uh, very affordably. I guess we like to have fun in a very safe fashion, and no one had to get maybe maybe one, but many people you arrived just sent ambulances. So. Uh, Group Boston was a success in almost every possible way that you can imagine, uh, and I hope student community government can continue that in the future with the new executive uh, councils. Yeah. Uh, thank you. We don't have another speaker tonight. I had your comment. I can report yes. the record. Uh, on Group Boston, uh, just so that you know the facts, uh, we did have one transport and I think two others that were assisted back to the residence halls or other uh, other places. But you're absolutely right; it was a you know, well managed uh, by the part of all people involved, well managed uh, event. Yeah, and the interesting thing is, um, it wasn't necessarily reported that way, and uh, for the students that were there. They knew that, and for the administration that was there, they knew how much of a success it was. Um, and I just hope that it will end up getting recorded that way by members of parliament. Um, I don't know if any of you freshman representatives attended. You attended it? Was it fun? A lot of people there? Were you a leader or something? No, it was not. But it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of people there. Um, and I, I, I want it to be recorded, at least by parliament, at least on our minutes, you know, in the history of the show. That group of hustling was a great success. Uh, the media you, it has a lot of power you can make. Uh, innocent people guilty, you can make guilty people innocent because you have
be massive. Like you're, you're writing to the masses. Uh, so unfortunately, there are some students that probably read um, stuff about Bruce Boston and thought it was a failure or uh, thought something different, that it wasn't as success as it was, and that obviously was not the case uh, for people who attended it. Uh, so hopefully that can be corrected somewhere in the future. Uh, but thank you. And uh, we'll move on to reports. Finance Commission minutes of October 30th, 2012, Treasure Day. I just ask that being accepted with unanimous consent. Anyone can say. Okay, we approve unanimous consent. Student organization committee minutes, uh, Secretary John Auger. Um, I'm just going to ask that they be accepted with unanimous consent, please. Any opposition? Opposition will be accepted with unanimous consent. We will now go to old business. Resolutions update. No, there's um, item C, Mr. Speaker, is the group boss report. Oh, I thought I was on the new business. Sorry. It's okay. So C, group boss report. Does everybody have a copy? I do. Well, you're right next to it's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, if anybody has any questions, the top is just kind of a description about how we put on the event. Um, and then this table right here, all these numbers should be accurate. I got them right from Mr. Palucci, so I'm sure they're 100% accurate. Um, it's just a breakdown of how many tickets were sold and to who, and the amount of money that we made from the event. So, sure. Um, just a friendly amendment. The where it says that programming resident student association ninety seven point nine point seven of USA and the amount of twenty thousand four hundred fifty three dollars. The last sentence, basically. Mm -hmm. So, how much was it? Twenty thousand four hundred fifty three dollars on the last line. And I just accept that it be, I ask that it be accepted with unanimous consent, and I accept that amendment as friendly, Mr. Speaker. So, you said you probably have been. Yes, there please. Any objection to the report? No objection? Yes, of course, we accept the unanimous consent. I told you guys, it's going to be very easy meeting today. Uh, oh, this is a resolution of. Does everybody have this sheet? The one that looks like this. Where did, where did they get lost? Right here. All right, cool. Um, All right. update about the progress of the resolution that we passed so far this semester. Um, we passed one about feminine hygiene dispensers being in major buildings on campus. And right now, um, we're all looking into cost effectiveness and quality, so we're in the process of that right now. The printers and computers in the residence halls. Um, in speaking with Vice President Gearhart, there was actually a suggestion in the President's suggestion box online that was asking that um, printers and computers be placed in other academic buildings besides residence halls. So I will be working with Vice President Gearhart on that initiative, and we're basically going to put them in the residence halls along with that initiative. And then as far as Mr. Sanchez, who is not here, um, his resolution from the last meeting that was not approved, I felt like it was relevant anyway um, that it was referred to Dr. Kane for guidance because it's something that we've never encountered. So um, does anybody have any questions? I just need to know who's like uh, who I'm working with us. You yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's me. Um, I haven't heard anything from Rob, though, so for the time being, it should be me. No, that's the end of that, unless anybody has any questions. Okay, and you were accepted as part of the consent? Yeah, I mean, it's not a report, though. Okay. It's just an update. It's an update. Yes. Yes. Uh, new business, A, Constitution, Secretary Yager. Yay. Okay, so um, the first Constitution that we have is a lot. It's going to dance club. I think you'll get the representative from what?
um, it's a club where you can like learn how to dance some salsa dance, like some to do salsa dance and swing dance. Um, we have Justin. Justin is the president of the club. He couldn't make it for today, but he actually has a long time dancing salsa and swing. So he's like one of that person, like one of those person that we like to look at and kind of follow him. And he'll be teaching us with other like instructors that we're trying to like, get on campus. Any further discussions? So um, if there is no if there's no further discussion, there's no further discussion on the Constitution. All those in favor of approving the Constitution say aye. Aye. All those say no. Abstentions. You guys approve. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. We now move on to our next Constitution and Rock Runs Club. Um, so we have two representatives um, for the Environment Club here. Um, do you want a motion to accept? Okay. So I'd like to have a motion to hear the Environment Club Constitution. Motion to second. Okay. Second, second by All right, uh, my name is John Fulton, and this is Renee Breton, President, Vice President. Um, we've been uh, working with Jim Murphy, who's the Sustainability Coordinator here at Rhode Island College, uh, for the past over the summer, um, helping with the Rhode Island College Garden um, at the church down the road, and he suggested that we. Um, organized with uh, fellow students to start an, an environmental club and bring sustainability issues to uh, our community. So our main plan is to implement, you know, cost saving measures with the school by, you know, uh, reducing waste, um, compost for a garden that we are uh, going to implement spring um, out on some property that the school owns uh, not through the lab so these are some of the things we are working on. Just to clarify um, the environmental club was a pre-existing club and they were restarting so if they revised the constitution um, they, there was really no changes other than um, the what had to be added into <coughs> from the new model um, so that was really all that changed from it. Okay. Uh, Vice President Costa? Uh, first of all, thank you for getting this restarted because as student parliament, we hear all the time from students how they feel that our campus isn't really too all that green at all, especially in our older buildings that we have. So thank you for taking the initiative and setting up and restarting it. I guess my question is kind of something that's more of like a language question that I had, probably more directed towards Secretary Auger. In um, Article 8, Committees and Commissions, it refers to the leader of a committee or commission as the head, but I figured that just as a consistency of language amongst um, constitutions, it would be a friendly amendment to change it to committee chair. Committee chair? Yeah. Okay. Did you accept that? I accept that as well. Should they accept that as well? I always gave them a choice. Yes. They want to be the head of the chair, so I, I it's not really head. a big deal. <laughs> so, but it means the same thing. So, yeah, I, that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys okay with that change? Okay. <laughs> Does that apply to both 8.1.2 and 8.1.3? Yes. Yes. I'm just double checking. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the Constitution? This is not a discussion of the Constitution, but since you're good enough to be here, mentioned the gardens that you assisted with. What's happening to the uh, uh, produce that you're securing from the gardens? Um, well, a lot of it was brought over to the farmer's market at Rhode Island College. Well, really, all we came out with in the end was a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of tomatoes. Um, but I actually came to some of them. We're going to try and have a dinner um, with all the people who helped make it happen. <laughs> and next year, hopefully, it's going to be a lot more productive. Maybe we can start collaborating with Don and get some people to do that. Make sure to let us know and we'll recruit to get people to come and taste your, your uh, product. Any further discussion on the Constitution? 
and no further discussion. All in favor of approving this constitution say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you.